There's a field called transpersonal psychology that's popular these days. Hello. But it's kind of a misnomer because psychology deals with the personal. When you really get transpersonal, you're also transpsychological. The psyche is personal. There is that which is trans or meta-psychological within us. That's what we call the spiritual. But it doesn't have anything to do with psychology. Psychology is very complex. It has to do with motivations and desires and fears and repressed fantasies. and uh, It's a, a huge labyrinth. We study it here. But the truth is, it's not really necessary. You can transcend psychology. You can transcend that whole dimension of your being if you're willing to disidentify from the person that you mistakenly believe that you are. That's the primary illusion. There's an identification of the essence of what we are with a construct, a very complex construct. And then once we're caught in the labyrinth of that construct, that's when suffering begins. And once you're in that labyrinth, it's very hard to get out of it. But the truth is, you're not really in it. You just believe you're in it. And so all you have to do is let go of the belief that you're the person trapped in this labyrinth of fears, anxieties, and all kinds of unknown motivations and reasons for eruptions of anxiety or depression or any other of many, many permutations of feelings and urges that seem irresistible, etc. You can transcend the jurisdiction of those urges and those forces that operate within the psychological plane simply by realizing you're not that person. That's the sacrifice that is required. When you can sacrifice the identification with the person, and it's a suffering person, why do you want to hold on to it? Well, it's all you know, right? And so everyone is always saying, oh, but it's so hard. Why is it so hard to get out of this labyrinth? It's so huge. Yes, it's hard if you believe you're that person, but the moment you're willing to disbelieve in that prime illusion, you're liberated. Because you were never in it. It's the same when you watch a movie that you really like and you identify with a character. When you're in, watching that movie, you're not in your seat in the theater anymore. You're in the screen. You've identified with the character. And you're going through what the character is going through and you're feeling all the anxiety, you know, will the villain defeat the hero or whatever is going on. And yet, the moment the film becomes boring, you're back in your seat. And you're saying, well, that's a lousy film. And you're out of it. All you got to do is realize your ego is a lousy film. <laughs> you get tired of it. You get bored with identification with that ego. You've done that. You've been there. You've gone around that block. You've fallen into that hole. How many times do you need to do it again? And the moment you realize, I don't need to do that anymore. I'm free. I'm done. Then you're out. You can again realize that what you are is not a person but an impersonal or transpersonal presence. That presence congealed this construct and this identification within a labyrinth that it called its reality, its world, but it wasn't really in it, and what it is is simply a pure awareness. That's not a thing, it's not an entity. It's not a nothing either. There's no way to define it or describe it because awareness or presence never becomes an object that you can look at. That's all, you can only look at or work with concepts or percepts or things, right, that apparently exist. But you're none of those. You are the presence to which all of that occurs. And so you are transcendent. That's our natural state. We are transcendent of any world that we happen to believe in. And yet we are also imminent in that world because that world is itself the consciousness, the modification of the presence that then we ramify into a very complex set of beliefs, 
fantasies, desires, wishes, fears, etc. But the actual being and real nature of the self, if you will, is simple. It has no parts. It's not compounded of anything. It's not put together in any way. It's prior to the ego. And its essential nature, besides being presence, is simply love, joy, happiness, peace, bliss even, for everyone, not just for one person or another. Therefore, you don't have to compare, well, why is that person happier than me? There isn't any difference. The differences are all within the labyrinth, within the illusion of the ego. But at the level of the real self, which is the presence that cannot be known, objectified, or turned into any kind of a thing, that which you are inherently at this very moment is liberated from all limitations, from all suffering, from time and space, from everything. And it's filled with those original qualities of divine love, beauty, peace, what you could call God or the Buddha nature or Shiva. It doesn't matter because it's beyond words, beyond any way of defining. And you are that now. That's what all the spiritual paths are all about. It all comes down to that. You can read a million books, but it all boils down to that very simple thing. You are that. Just stop believing in anything else and silence the mind that continues the labyrinth and, and, and this merry-go-round of suffering that you're on. And the moment you do that, you're free. So that's all we're doing in meditation, is liberating ourselves from an illusion that was never real in the first place. So it's all very simple. Let's not make it difficult for ourselves. And as soon as you wholeheartedly want to be out of the movie and back in the, in the heart, it will happen. There's no force that can stop it except yourself, except your own resistance to freedom. And so that's what comes up when we meditate after a while. We realize it's our own fear of freedom. And we make up reasons why we shouldn't be free. Oh, other people will be disappointed in me because I'll be different. They'll be threatened. Uh, I won't be carrying on the whatever traditions of this or that. Uh, my freedom would disturb the universe. Whatever issues you create, but they're all illusions. They're all stories you tell yourself that have no truth. And your freedom is actually the greatest gift you can offer to others by modeling the fact that freedom is available here and now to everyone. And the cost is only letting go of an illusion, not of anything real. And the gain is priceless, infinite, and eternal. So anyone who looks at this at all logically, with any clarity of mind, will say, wow, I want it now. Why wait? And because now is the only time you can have it, if you wait, you're saying no to it. And you're creating a sanskara or a tendency to say no to it in the next now and also put it off to the next and the next and the next. And that's why we've had so many lifetimes of always thinking, I'm going to do it soon. And then, boom, that lifetime is over and then you get to the next one. Soon never shows up. So, it can only happen in the now. And because the now is all there is. The past and future are in the film. If you want to live in time and that illusion, then you're also in the trap of suffering. So, if you're willing to surrender the illusion of time, the illusion of the ego, the illusion that brings about all suffering, you're free. Nothing can stop you. That's why God is called Almighty. There is no power that can prevent the liberation of your being.